Good day everyone. So I, Miss Alcantara and Miss Magallanes will discuss about the aspect of gene therapy. So medical science has detected many human diseases related to defective genes. So when we say defective genes, it is the errors in our genes that control cell division that can cause us cancer. These type of diseases are not curable by traditional methods like taking readily available medicines. Gene therapy is a potential method to either treat or cure or cure genetic related human illnesses. So we all know naman that cancers are cannot be cured by taking um available medicines. That's why um the gene therapy is one of the potential method to uh, treat or cure uh, genetic human illnesses like the uh, cancer. So in 2015, a, a team of researchers at the Harvard Medical School and the Boston Children's Hospital stated that they were restored a higher level of hearing down to 25 decibels, which is actually equivalent to a whisper. They used an improved gene therapy vector developed at the Massachusetts eye and ear that was identified as ANC80, which enables the transfer of genes to the inaccessible outer hair cells when introduced into a cochlea. So, in this study, in 2015, the researchers developed that the transfer of the genes into the accessible outer hair cells when introduced to the cochlea can restore a higher level of hearing down to the 25 decibels. So, this gene therapy is usually for the uh, deaf. So, human gene therapy was actually first realized in 1971 when the first recombinant DNA experiments were planned. It can be simply viewed as insertion foreign DNA into a patient's tissue that hoped to successful, successfully eradicate the targeted disease. It was actually inspired by the success of recombinant DNA technology which occurred over the last 20 years. Without a doubt, gene therapy is the most promising yet possibly unfavorable medical field being studied. So the uh, process, uh, the basic process of Gene therapy well discussed by Miss Alcantara. Genes play an important role in human health and genes that don't work properly can cause disease. Sometimes the whole or part of a gene is defective or missing from birth, or a gene can change or mutate during adult life. This is why may ara mga bata na abnormal or may mga syndromes kami par sa ila genes nga missing sang ginabusong pa lang sila. Or minsan, may ara genes nga mahina kaya habang gadako ang bata at to nga genes nagmutate or nagbago. So there is a possibility that it will lead to diseases like cancer or other disease which cause to the genetic disorder. There is a better way to fix this genetic disorder sa pamaagi sang gene therapy. Gene therapy works by replacing or inactivating disease-causing genes. In some cases, gene therapy introduces new genes into the body to treat a specific disease. With gene therapy, doctors deliver a healthy copy of a gene to cells inside the body. This healthy gene may replace a damaged or the mutated gene or introduce an entirely new genes. Carriers called vectors transport these healthy genes into cells. In most cases, the vectors are modified viruses that do not cause disease. May are several types of viruses including retroviruses, adenovirus, adenosated virus, and herpes simplex virus nga na-modified sa laboratory para gamitin sa gene therapy 
applications. Actually, they are not bad viruses. Injection or intravenous infusion introduces vectors in the body. In some cases, doctors collect cells from patients, add vectors in a laboratory, and return the vector containing cells to the patient's body through injection. Next is the two types of gene therapy which Ms. Magallanes will discuss. The idea of gene therapy is based on correcting a disease as its root, fixing the abnormal genes that appear to lead to certain diseases. So, there are two types of gene therapy. First is the somatic gene therapy, which involves the manipulation of genes in cells that will be helpful to the patient but not inherited to the next generation. It is the placement of a human gene into a living person's somatic cells. And when we say somatic cells, it is any cell of the body except the sperm and egg cells. It aims to cure a disease only in the patient, not in the patient's descendants. It was initially conceived as introducing a properly functioning copy of a gene into a person who had a genetic disease as a result of inheriting only improperly functioning copies. Different types of somatic cell gene therapy have been investigated for the treatment of diseases that are not primarily caused by inherited genes, such as AIDS and cancer. Next is the germline gene therapy. It involves the genetic modification of germ cells or the origin cells that will pass the change on to the next generation. If somatic gene therapy transfers a section of DNA to any cell that doesn't produce sperm or eggs, the germline gene therapy, on the other hand, transfers a section of DNA to cells that produce eggs or sperm, or the reproductive cells. This therapy will correct the genetic variants of the reproductive cells of an individual. And the effects of this therapy will be passed on to the patient's children and subsequent generations. The goal would be to change the child's genetic inheritance. This could be done in order to avoid a genetic disease or in order to introduce an enhancing genetic variation. There have been no trials of human germline therapy, and there is an informal moratorium in the scientific community on trying such experiments in humans. Stem cells are the foundation for every organ and tissue in our body. May ara mga different types of stem cells that come from different places at lawas or are formed at different times in our lives. So there are two main types of stem cells. This include embryonic stem cells that exist only at the earliest stages of development and various type of tissue specific or adult stem cells that appear during fetal development and remain in our bodies throughout our lives. So tanan galing stem cells can self-renew or predisla kakapis ang sila sa diri or ginatawag na cloning and differentiate or develop into more specialized cells. Embryonic stem cells are obtained from the inner cell mass of the blastocyst, a mainly hollow ball of cells that in the human forms 3 to 5 days after an egg cell is fertilized by a sperm. Ang blastocyst gali kung mabalan is kadako lang sa tuldok sang letter I. Muna siya ang 5 days fertilized egg. Tissue specific stem cells, also referred to somatic or adult stem cells, are more specialized than embryonic stem cells. Typically, these stem cells can generate different cell types for the specific tissue or organ in which they live. Example is ang blood forming dabi. So, pwede siya ka-generate or give rise to red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. However, ang blood forming is hindi siya pwede ka-generate sa liver, lung, or brain cells. The Bioethics of Gene Therapy When we say bioethics, 
It is a branch of applied ethics that studies the philosophical, social, and legal issues arising in medicine and life sciences. There are ethical issues involved in gene therapy. Some of the inquiries cited are, number one, how can good and bad uses of gene therapy be distinguished? Number two, who decides which traits are normal and which constitute a disability or disorder? Number three, will the high cost of gene therapy make it available only to the wealthy? Number four, could the widespread use of gene therapy make society less accepting of people who are different? And number five, should people be allowed to use gene therapy to enhance basic human traits such as height, intelligence, or athletic ability? Another controversy involves the germline therapy. As discussed, germline therapy is genetic modification of germ cells that will pass the change on to the next generation. There are a lot of questions on the effects of the gene alteration to the unborn child and the next generation, since the alteration can be passed on. In the United States, the government does not fund researchers on human germline gene therapy. It poses risk not only to patients, but also to future generations. It raises difficult ethical questions related to tampering with human nature, enhancing human traits, parental control over children's lives, discrimination, social inequalities, and eugenics. Also, somatic gene therapy has had some successes but still faces significant technical challenges. It raises questions concerning safety and efficacy of treatments and protection for human research subjects. Overall, gene therapy in human beings raises a variety of important ethical, legal, and social issues. That's the end of our report. That's all for the aspect of gene therapy. Thank you very much.